Well, recently uh, I had the privilege of reconnecting with a friend that I hadn't seen in many years. And I asked her how she was doing. And she said, not well, I am grieving. And I said, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize someone had died. And she said, no, not someone, something. And she proceeded to tell me that the house in which she grew up, her childhood home, had recently been sold, and that the new owners were planning to tear it down and to build a new house in its place. And she said she was grieving because that was the house in which she learned to walk, in which she lost her front tooth, in which she celebrated birthdays and holidays, the house in which she got ready for her prom. And it's always so hard to know what to say to people who are grieving. And I tried to remind her that there is a difference between a house and a home. That a house is a structure, a temporary structure, but that a home is something very different. And that's also true for our little church. We love this structure. We love it. But this structure isn't the church. This is the church. You are the church. And although we don't like to think about this, someday this church will not be here. That is what Jesus is saying in today's gospel that the structures in which we have built, they are all going to come down at some point. And we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that our family's cottage that has been in generations forever is someday not going to exist. We don't want to think that this church built in 1882 is someday not going to exist. And we certainly don't want to think that we someday are not going to exist. But that is the truth. We resist that truth because we are afraid of change. We resist change. It's something fearful to us. And there are many people in our country today who are so resistant to change and they're so fearful of it that they want to hold on to the old structures. And I'm not talking literal structures. I'm talking symbolic structures. So, for example, we hear people today who say, I wish we could go back to the good old days. And it seems they want to go backward to a time where they think America was great. Now, when I think about those good old days, I'm not really sure what they're talking about. Because in those good old days, women couldn't vote. And women couldn't hold positions of power in government, in corporations, and in the church. And in those good old days, black people had to drink from separate water fountains. And they had to sit at the back of the bus. And in those good old days, the LGBTQ community had to hide in the closet. Those good old structures had to come crashing down. We had to tear them down. And when that happens, as Jesus says in today's gospel, there will be great conflict, great division. There will be death. But those structures that we've built cannot stay in place. They have to be torn down. Now, it seems what Jesus is speaking about in today's gospel is the end of the world. But that's not what he's speaking about. He's not talking about the end of the world. He's talking about the coming of the kingdom. Now, what is the kingdom? Well, you know, when Jesus told us to go forth and to go out and build the church, he wasn't telling us to go out and build physical structures. That's not what he meant. 
He meant to go out and build the kingdom. And he said this kingdom is a place where the least shall be first, where the lowly will be lifted up high, and where the least of these, the last, they'll be considered the most important. That's the kingdom he wanted us to go build. And he's telling the apostles here, this is not going to be easy. Because in order for us to do this, we have to tear down the existing structures. And that will be met with a lot of war and division and conflict. Now notice what he says. He says to them, do not be alarmed. This must happen. This is the beginning of birth pangs. Now you know that when a woman gives birth, to give birth to new life, it requires pain. Jesus is saying the birth of this new kingdom will be painful. It will be painful, but don't worry. Don't be alarmed. These things must happen. And you and I, if we are to call ourselves Christians, followers of Jesus, then you and I are called to continue to build this kingdom, no matter how difficult it may be. Now, in our words of integration and guidance this morning that Eric read for us, it said, It is scientifically true that the brighter the light, the darker the shadows. That the more light that we bring into the world, the stronger the fear-based resistance to the light will be. The more light we bring into the world, the stronger the fear-based resistance to that light will be. So we have built up structures, not literal structures, but structures that say the good old structures were the structures that kept women from the workplace that kept black people at the back of the bus, that kept gay people in the closet. But there were people who were working to bring those people to the table, a place where everybody could be included. But that was always met with fear-based resistance. People who wanted to hold on to those structures for dear life, because if those structures were torn down, they were afraid, afraid of the loss that they would experience, the loss of the privilege that those structures afforded them. Jesus was the light of the world, and he was killed because of that fear-based resistance to the kingdom he was trying to build. Jesus was instructing us to tear down those structures that oppress people. And because of that, he was silenced. And so was Abraham Lincoln. And so was Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. So was Mahatma Gandhi. So was John F. Kennedy. So was John Lennon. So was Harvey Milk. Whenever people worked to bring more people to the table, to include more people in equal rights, they were met with fear-based resistance. And that's what we are experiencing. I know in today's gospel, Jesus says, do not be alarmed. And you may say, Pastor Sal, how can I turn on the news and not be alarmed? But Jesus is saying, these things must happen happen. They're the beginning of birth pangs. That just means that new birth, new life is on its way. We are building the kingdom. We are. So do not despair and do not give up hope. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. So this week is Thanksgiving week, 
And so I just want to express gratitude to the people who came before us, those people of light, those people who were working to tear down those systems, those structures that oppress people. And because of that, they suffered, they were persecuted, and they died. We, we say thank you for them, for their struggle. And we also say thank you because we're following in their footsteps. We have been called to build the kingdom and to follow in their steps. And guess what? We are. Just a few weeks ago, we, the American people, elected into public office more women, more people of color, more LGBTQ people, more Native Americans, and more Muslims into public office than we ever have in the history of this great nation. Okay. For most of the existence of the United States of America, the structure that we built was held solely by white, heterosexual, Christian, cisgender males. We are tearing down that house, that structure, because we are about the work of building the kingdom. That will be met by fear-based resistance, as we've seen. People want to hold on to those structures for dear life, because if they lose them, they lose their privilege. We are working to build a just world for all, a place where all people are considered one. That's what Jesus instructed us to do, and it's hard work. But Jesus tells us in today's gospel, do not be alarmed and do not give up hope. Do not despair. So let us take that message to heart this morning as we continue to do the work of building the kingdom. As God says in Scripture, Look, old things are being passed away, and all things are being made new. Namaste. Namaste.